Kim McGuigan, uh, welcome. Uh, it's so good to, uh, to, to to have you in the studio. We've got lots to talk about yeah. in such a short space of time. The conference on the 11th of June, uh, its aims, ambitions, how it came about. We'll talk about that shortly. Yeah. But tell me about tell me about you and tell me about your journey living through ACES and, and having that lived experience. I guess it started like in 2013. Um, up until that then, I was living like quite a chaotic lifestyle. Um, it was just absolutely wild. And then I got a community sentence in 2013. Um, I was just getting into lots of trouble with the police. I was in a really toxic relationship. Um, and I got told I was going to get like a sentence in prison. So at that time, I thought that like, prison was the answer to all my problems. Um, so I turned up to court um, expecting my prison sentence. And then I got told to go away for a background report for social workers. Um, so I went away and done that and then I went back again and um, I was told to go and tie all my dealings on the outside so basically I had a wee boy I had to go and make sure he was looked after and stuff like that because I was to expect a custodial sentence um, so I done that I was relieved, I thought I'll go to prison, I'll be able to get my head done, um, get away from the relationship I was in and then in my head I thought like that was the answer, Like I just thought that was the answer to get away from everything. So I turned up to court with my bag and I was ready. Like, I was just, if I hadn't been to prison, like, I'm not sure what would have happened to me. Like, I, I was just, everything was just mental. And um, the judge told me that she was giving me a community sentence. And I was like, oh, oh no, like, what am I going to do now? Because obviously I, I had a plan in my head that I was going into prison, I was going to get the heat done. Um, sort my life out in prison and then came out and obviously be a mum and my wee boy, which obviously, looking back now, is just crazy. So, um, so were you more scared then about the prospect of not going to prison? Yeah, because obviously I had to go back to my life the way it was. Like, it was so much chaos. Like, um, As I said, I was in a really toxic relationship. I just, I was really struggling to keep my head above the water and struggling to do the right thing for my wee boy. And... Um, I don't know, I just thought, like, if I had a way to jail, then I would have been able to sort my life out. He wouldn't be getting affected by my, everything that I was doing. And and then, I don't know, like, it was just mad. And then after I got the community sentence, I tried to breach the order. Because still, like, I just couldn't get away from the relationship or anything like that. And then, I guess, the turning point for me was my wee boy started playing with the one. And, eh... Uh, like, uh, when he went into the playground, he went and joined his wee queue, he went to his classroom, and something just sparked in me, like, it was, I don't know what it was, like, I've just never felt anything like that in my life, it was just, like, this drive, like, I need to get help, like, I just remembered, like, when I was in primary one, like, I, I, I can't really remember, um, anything really good about it, and I was like, I don't want him to have the same feelings or experiences, so... For that minute, I just knew I had to get help, and um, so I went down to make an appointment with my probation officer, and um, that's when I kind of started my journey of change. And the understanding of ACEs over the past six years, how has it how has it changed your life? How has it changed the way that you currently live, and the way that you bring up your wee boy? Yeah, um, just having just having something like I always knew there was something wrong with me. I just didn't know what it was. Like the, as soon as I learnt about ACEs and trauma. Like, it gave me something that I could understand, like, that I could relate to. I, I knew I never had mental health issues, like, and that was something that I kind of discovered. I was like, oh, maybe I have got mental health issues. Like, understanding about ACEs, what an adverse childhood experience was, like, understanding, like, all mine. Like, so obviously nobody ever A scored me or anything, but when I found out about the A scoring, it, it gave me something to look at and go like that, do you know what? M maybe that is why, like... This is why, obviously, I am the way I am. So um, it helped me understand what was wrong with me and it helped me make sure that I could become different for my wee boy. I think one interesting thing that's come through so far in the conversation that we're having, Kim, is that you've talked about relationships. Mm -hmm. So whether that was relationship with your past partner, whether it was with family, yeah. then the more positive relationships, obviously, with your son. Yeah. It seems that relationships 
for Scotland yeah. are at the heart of, of, of the ACES movement. Yeah, it is. So it only takes that one person. One person to just say, look, I'm here for you. I get it. Like, I know what you're going through. And even if they don't know what you're going through, like, just somebody to say, I'm here for you. Let's talk. That was everything to me. Like, see, if in school, if somebody had uh, reached out to me, like, or in my community or something like that when I was off the rails when I was a teenager, if I just had that one person that I could have connected with, then I think I would have had a different outcome. And obviously it wasn't until I was an adult that I was able to recover from my trauma and um, I think that's what my message is, like getting it right for the adults that are obviously out there still that are obviously got undiagnosed trauma and... Uh, we'll, we'll come on to the conference mm-hmm. in just a moment, but you have made massive changes to your life, yeah. and so much now you are um, part of the culture change that's yeah. happening in Scotland. I think it's fair to say you might not describe yourself as that, but I certainly will. Um, you know, you work with the community uh, with Community Justice Scotland. Yeah. You work with Karen McCluskey, yeah. uh, who's very well known um, in in those circles, extremely well known. And yeah. um, tell me about the work that you're you're currently doing and how are you whether you whether you think you are or not how are you I changing I still have lives? to pinch myself yeah. when everybody's like oh, that's Kim for Community Justice Scotland like it's still obviously now like it has sunk in but sometimes I'm like oh my god is this actually my life but um, Karen's like the first woman role model I've ever had in my life like she's just amazing and she never gave up on me either like just for the minute I met her she seen something in me she believed in me and then I'd ended up working with Community Justice Scotland, so I started off doing a modern apprenticeship. I was focused around like the age of criminal responsibility, management of offenders stuff and that, and disclosure. So when I started doing that, I realised that that's what I wanted to do as a career. Like I knew I could make change in that kind of work. And then so my apprenticeship got changed for just a modern apprenticeship. It's focused on um, policy and creating change. And, and you're advising government? Yeah. Going to like consultation groups and all that, stakeholder groups, meeting up with different partners and events and engaging with communities and other people. It's amazing. I bet. And lots of public speaking. Yeah. I've kind of um, not done as much public speaking as I have done, obviously, previously, but um, and I can't remember what it was. A few months ago, I went and spoke at Bella Houston Academy with uh, the First Minister and John Swinney and Harry Burns and... That was me speaking about my adverse childhood experiences and my journey, and like that. That's just amazing, mental. So let's talk about the conference. It's right. on the eleventh uh, of June at the Royal Concert Hall in Glasgow. You were uh, at the uh, conference in September, the yeah. the Ace Aware uh, uh, Nation conference, where James spoke. Of yeah. course, James, I must say, is the co-organizer yeah. of this of this conference this time around. What sort of effect did that conference have on you? Oh, it was just something else, like. See, like, just sitting in that audience, like, you can feel the energy, like, you can feel, I don't know what it is, it's just life-changing for somebody like me, like, it's just amazing, and it just inspired me so much to continue, obviously, working and trying to create change, and um, me and James went to the Belfast Trauma Summit, and um, we seen Gabar and Matty speak, and the both of us just looked at each other, like, we have to get him to Scotland, and, um we were just brainstorming like how can we make this happen and um, that's when we contacted Tigers and Connected Baby and Ace of Our Nation to ask them if they would support us to try and achieve our vision and they said aye. So, so tell us tell us about the, the, the theme of the conference. I take it we, it's a, it's, we're, we're quite adult focused mm-hmm. on uh, with this particular conference aren't yeah. we? Yeah so it's obviously trying to reach people that, that are obviously still in chaos that we want to get people there that's Working in the communities, we want to get people that is affected by addiction or the justice service or care experienced or education. We want everybody there so that everybody can get to hear Gabor and experience um, his knowledge and stuff like that. And hopefully we can take it out to our works and our everyday life and uh, keep continuing to make things better. Tell me about your thoughts, Kim, about um, Scotland putting lived experience at the centre of what's actually happening you've got like obviously you've got to put the people who it affects and the people who have lived it at the heart of it because like you wouldn't send in a plumber to fix a light wouldn't you know so like how can you learn something if you've never experienced it if you don't know like it's alright to sit and write 
books and feces and study stuff for ever, but see if you've never ever walked a mile in that person's shoes. How can you get it? You can't get it. So you you need the people who are affected to help fix it and help create change, and that's why lived experience should be at the heart of it all. So it seems that this conference is 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 another step on the journey yeah. that Scotland is taking yeah. in terms of that overall culture change. Yeah, I definitely. Um, I've never seen anything like it. It's amazing to be part of it, and um, I just think this is what it should be about. Like instead of having lots, obviously, all lots of wee events, but have these big events and get big speakers and get a lot of interest and in, for government all the way down to like the person like me, the mothers and the, that are pushing the prams down the street, get everybody involved and like that's where things will get better. And in terms of the, the results of the conference, you've talked you've outlined what the conference yeah. is about and who it's aimed at. What are the results you would like to see from the conference, both you and James? I just want to keep Scotland worth moving in the right direction. I want more trauma trauma informed services run about. Like as I said, talking about my experiences, um there was no service that I could particularly t- tap into that could obviously help me. Like if there was a, a service just to run like trauma, like I could chat for the other door and go, This is what happened to me, how can you help me? People that are specialised in it and obviously I don't think my journey would would have been as long in getting help. Um more mentors, like stuff like that, eh? That's what I'd like to see. Kim, it's a massively inspiring story okay. and uh, I look forward to seeing you at the conference on the 11th yeah. of June in Glasgow. Cheers, thanks, Kim, Kim McGuigan, thank you very thank much you. indeed.